Hearts, welcome to the show. I hope you've had a wonderful weekend and I am so glad that you're here visiting with me on this Sunday evening. Before I get started, hit that like button for me. And remember, if you haven't been here before, let me introduce myself. I'm Michelle Forto and I'm the lead trainer of Alaska Dog Works, where we help families learn how to have the best trained dog in Alaska. On this channel, you're gonna get training tips and tricks, product reviews, and advice on how to have a better relationship with your dog. So today was kind of a big day if you're a football fan. Did you catch those playoff games? Which football team did you and your canine buddy root for? Let me know in those comments below. And if they won or if they didn't, are you excited anyways for the Super Bowl? All right, you guys, on that note, I'm gonna talk to you about some mascots that are canine buddies for a handful of college teams. It's gonna be a lot of fun. On your screen, you are looking at Uga number 10. Uga number 10 is the mascot for the University of Georgia. He's a bulldog, and although it's a he this time, it sometimes has been a she. There has also been a bull terrier and a goat have served as mascots for the school at the University of Georgia, but it's Ugo the Bulldog is the one of the most well-known mascots in college sports history. Uga number one made its field appearance in 1956. How cool is that? So if you want to raise up a cool bulldog like Uga, you might need to contact the University of Georgia. All right, you guys, the next one, this is Dubs. Dubs is an Alaskan Malamute from the University of Washington. And doesn't it look like Dubs is having fun? I think it does. So after trying out a few different ideas, the University of Washington settled on a Husky as the official mascot in 1922. Although the school's athletic program refers to themselves as the Huskies, the live mascot has for decades been an Alaskan Malamute, considered by school officials as a similar but stronger spitz breed. The current mascot named Dubs II has been the official mascot since 2018. All right, you guys, that's kind of a weird story, right? They are the Huskies, but they have an Alaskan Malamute as their mascot. All right, the next one is Revelry, and I know I have problems saying that, but Miss Rev is the first lady of Texas A&M University. She sure is a good looking collie, isn't she? The first Revelry became the official mascot in 1931 after leading the band onto the field before a home football game. According to school tradition, if Revelry a collie barks during a class, it means that she is bored and the professor should dismiss the class. I like that rule. All right, you guys. On to Smokey. This is Smokey of the University of Tennessee. He's a blue tit coonhound, and this is the 10th one that they've had as their mascot. So, after deciding to employ a live mascot, the University of Tennessee held a contest in 1953 where the students voted to select the next school mascot by cheering. The loud baying of a blue tick coonhound named Brooks Blue Smokey won over the crowd and so the tradition was born. Smokey 10 now represents the school and a Smokey costume mascot leads the football team through a giant tee onto the field. That's a lot of fun. Okay, check out Cole. He looks like he's having a good time. Not only is Cole a mascot, but for the Boise State University, but Cole also retrieves the football uh, 
what is it called? T. T. <laughs> so Cole retrieves the football T after they get ready to do a kick. How awesome is that? So it's a great job for a Labrador retriever in my opinion. Um, the tradition of using labs to assist Boise State University's special teams units first began in the mid-1990s and has taken off since then. The current tea retrieving dog, Cole, works double duty as a bat retrieval dog for a local minor league baseball team, and his on-field antics have made him a viral internet hit for years. He looks like he's having a blast in his orange coat and and scarf with his name on it. Okay, next up we have the weirdest of all the names, and this is Jonathan. Jonathan is a Siberian Husky from the University of Connecticut, and if you look at Jonathan, Jonathan looks a little bit on the daffer side to me. He doesn't look like a working sled dog Siberian Husky. He looks like a straight up show dog, but either way, he's still having a good time running around on the field. And the University of Connecticut's official mascot has been a live Husky named Jonathan since 1935. According to the school, the official mascots are named after former Connecticut Governor Jonathan Trumbull, who was nicknamed Brother Jonathan by President George Washington during the Revolutionary War. The current mascot, uh, Jonathan, what is that, 24, 25? I'm not good with Roman numerals. Joined the ranks in 2014, taking over for a white husky named Jonathan. So that's kind of a pretty historic little rendition of our mascots for some of our schools. Now, here in Alaska, the University of Anchorage uses a very odd mascot, but it does kind of count as a dog if you consider a seawolf of the canine variety. So our mascot is not live, so that's why I didn't feature it, but I'm sure that our Seawolf fans here in Alaska understand why I did not include him as he is not a live canine buddy. Okay, so today during the football games, I was working with some of our wonderful clients and I gotta say, I do appreciate them taking time out of their day to do their classes with me. And um, we ultimately ended the day working with one of my favorite clients. And I say that because they work really hard in between our classes and it really shows. And I just gotta tell you guys, we give you the homework and we give you the directional videos in our Ascent course so that you can take the time to learn how to work and control your dog with your own style. And that's really what I wanna see because when you do it with your dog with your own style instead of me constantly just showing you what to do, you really do develop a different type of bond with your dog and it shows. So when I was working out with Goulash today, who by the way, his parents are big time Packer fans. Not only did they show up in Packer, some Packer garb at the Lowe's on Muldoon, they brought their German short haired pointer and our wire haired pointer and we had a good time while Adam was watching the game on his iPhone and it proved to be a great training opportunity because what better way to work in distractions and commanding your dog and you actually be behaving like you're not paying attention to that dog on a stay or calling him to you without looking at him. So we did all of those types of exercises today in the lows with lots of distractions, people all around, people watching, people watching um, uh, Lori, his mom and I sneak around behind displays and boxes and trying to get his attention while Adam is watching the game and pretending to be shopping and making sure that Goulash was on his stay and he'd go out of sight, he'd go about 50 feet away and then he would call him to him and never looking at the dog in the face, just giving him his commands. I was very proud of this young 10 month old dog and their parents. It all was going well until a Yorkie 
terrier came around the corner without the person paying attention to the leash. The guy had the leash extended all the way out and he didn't come around the aisle until well after his dog did, lunging, barking, growling, and clawing at the ground to try to get to Goulash who was trying his hardest to remain on a stay. It did freak him out a little bit, but we corrected that. So if you do take your dog into Lowe's and whether you're a client of mine or not, be mindful of the fact that other people do take their dogs into Lowe's too. And Lowe's is super awesome about allowing us to do all of that. But curb your dog. Make sure that your dog remains in heel. I don't care what kind of dog it is, whether it's a Yorkie in a red and green sweater or if it's goulash. You still need to curb your dog and mind your dog's manners. And if your dog becomes out of control, then you need to immediately leave the area and the store. Regain control before you re-enter. That's just common courtesy as we are borrowing someone else's space. All right, you guys. So I want you guys to get ready while I talk to you guys about our products. So. As you know, we have a coffee company called First Paw Coffee, and Robert just brought home our last variety or our latest variety called Road Trippin'. And we passed out some influencer goodie bags to a couple of our clients this weekend, as well as a couple of our friends from the University of Alaska. If you are interested in participating in our influencer opportunity, let me know in the comments below and we can hook you up with a goodie bag and you would be able to do some reviews for us to help promote our first co paw coffee company and we would really appreciate it. So let me know in those comments below if you'd be interested in reviewing a bag or two of our coffee. Okay, so one last thing. When the person with the Yorkie in the store was out of control, one of the things I noticed right away was the type of leash he was using. Believe it or not, he was using a retractable leash, which means that the dog fully extended onto the end of that leash about 20 feet from his owner. And that is where the problem was first noticed, okay? So if you have a six foot leash like this, a slip lead doesn't even matter. You have care and control of your dog properly, especially in a public place. So do not use a retractable leash inside of a store. Do not use a retractable leash in a high, uh, uh, in a high traffic area, like if you're in a park and there's a lot of things going on, bikers and rollerbladers and kids on scooters and joggers and stuff like that. Um, it's winter time, so anybody on skis or, or anything like that, then your retractable leash is a danger for everyone involved. So I want you guys to consider taking a look at our Mendota slip leads. This is a six foot one. This one is called Black Ice Turquoise and we have them available on our website at all times. We have a lot of different colors and that is our leash of choice. It is the leash and the product that we have been using since the inception of our company uh, when we started doing dog training back in Denver. And I gotta tell you, it is my number one product it, in sales, but also in recommendation. It really does make a difference in your dog's training when you're having trouble with the dog learning how to walk on a leash. You don't necessarily need to use this for the life of the dog, but most of my clients do, and they really do like it once they learn how to use it. There is a video also over on First Paw Media that tells you how to use this leash. It's really sweet and it's short. So I appreciate you guys taking time to tune in with me on this Sunday night. I'll see you guys next Wednesday.